and what am I doing right? And, and when you say that, I think myself, wow, you know. Uh, well, let's see, when Guy La Liberté met Bobby Baldwin, he was a jungler, juggler at Venice Beach, and now he just sold Cirque du Soleil for $2 billion. And, you know, uh, going to Bobby's office and saying, hey, uh, you know, I have this idea to do a circus but with no animals, and anybody else would have thrown this guy out of their office. And Bobby you know, said, "Hey, you know that's interesting. Let's let's work this concept." And and uh, you know started out Cirque du Soleil. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then you got Andrew Sisson, who was a door guy and having trouble with his investor backers. And Bobby went and invested with whatever he got got uh, Bellagio to build light, and then Light Group, and then they sell that. And now you know Andrew Sisson's worth a couple hundred million. And here I am. Hey, I'm I'm next. <laughs> What's the project? So we're talking balls. <laughs> Are we, talking, are we talking balls here? Is that what it is? Uh, are we talking balls? I don't know. No, because just... fear, fear prevents, like, mm. you know, fear prevents people from going up to a Phil Ivy or a Bobby Borden, right? Everybody wants to, but fear stops them. But obviously it hasn't stopped you, right? Mm. You've said, you, you've felt the same rush. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, fuck it. Just, just go and do it, you oh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting because, I mean, I was one of those guys with my face on the window of Bobby's room looking in there and seeing Chip Reese, Bobby. Oh, my gosh, that's Bobby Baldwin. In there. <laughs> it, it, it is interesting because sometimes we're around because uh, you would never know if you were just at a, 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 grabbing a, grab a cocktail at a bar with Bobby Baldwin. You would never, never know that this guy is like a legend. And sometimes I would tell you, yeah, when I met him, like, I was like, my face was planted on the window. Like, man, I wonder, I, I wonder if he'd be all right with me taking a picture with him or something like that. That's exactly exactly how I was that's what that's what it was so you you built you built this brand of um, being broke living running around the world living life as a millionaire without any money yeah now that then strikes me as somebody who is a bit of a paradox here because it seems like there's no purpose in that because you're just traveling around the world trying to make as much money as you can but it's also very clever so it also does feel like it's a purpose so let me ask you this question What's your purpose right now, right now, as you exist? What is it all about? What are you, what are you playing poker for? Who are you playing for? What are you doing? What are you doing it for? Well, now it, it's actually shifted. It shifted because I've just been recently married and thinking about starting a family now. So now my purpose is now, back then, it's like balls to the wall, fall out fly on your ass, it doesn't matter because it's just me, I'll just get up and start all over. You know, now that the wife and hopefully in the future, the kids, you know, now that that's a new factor. Now, safety, security, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, future is like a, a much higher priority. And I'm just making that shift now. Right, right. Yeah. And, and while doing that, also going through like uh, just a terrible run at poker. I mean, like just getting tortured. At the wrong time. <laughs> Tortured. I mean, it's been unbelievable. And, you know, people, you, you know, you have these runs and everything, but I mean, it, it's like sitting there, wow, man, this can't be happening again, <laughs> you know? But uh, but it happens. It happens to all of us. And, you know, and I, I know that some people, again, watching this interview, oh my gosh, how can this guy be talking about a bad run? He's over there in Montenegro, you know, mixing it up with the best of the best. It, but, uh, it, but I'm just saying, these things happen. And now, before, again, it was, Myself now I got to say oh wow now I got a new wife that I got to look after as well So it's not just the same as like, you know You go bad bad luck, you know start again tomorrow now We got to really be thinking about not just me family So your, your purpose now is switched from I'm an inspiration to uh, the John John Robert Ballon fans to I'm an inspiration to my wife and to my future children and that's what I'm playing for. Well, that's the priority. That's, that's the, priority. the priority. Okay. Yeah. So where do we where do we three to five years from now? Well, you know, three to five years. Like I said, hopefully, I'm uh, feeling a little more secure. And to be honest with you, uh, two or three years ago, I was much much better off than I am right now. Uh, you know, and that's partly because of. Uh, you know, good runs, bad runs, whatever. But, uh, you know, three years ago, I was in, like, fantastic shape. And now it's just a little bit of struggling, you know, that goes on. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be I'm gonna be just fine. Three years from now, uh, you know, I, I, whew, three years from now, man, I really hope we're in really, really good shape. Hope is, it, is it just poke you think about, though? Because, like, I'm, I'm 43, so I'm a, little, I'm a little bit younger than you. But something happened when I turned 40. And every now and then, I just I just catch myself thinking about mortality. <laughs> I just catch myself thinking, 40 years, 
boom like that. Mm. So the next 40 is gonna go boom like that. So I need to get my shit in order right now and figure out what I wanna do, how I'm gonna get everything sorted out. Do you have thoughts like that? Or are you, are you just so tunnel visioned in the moment? Are you, are you able to like freak the fuck out a little bit about approaching 50? Um. The approaching 50 doesn't bother me as much. I, approaching 40 freaked me out a lot. I'm 47 right now, and yeah, I've just noticed that every year is like, hey, you know what? This is this is this is a great year, great age, and you know, uh, um, I did think that if I was going to get married, I'd get married a little younger than now. You know, it's like I'm 47. I I just had friends from high school at my wedding, and their kids are like getting ready to graduate college, and I'm thinking about starting to have a kid right now, and it, it, this was my high school roommate, you know what I mean? And it's like, for them, the thought of like starting a new family right now, wow, bizarre, but uh, um, yeah. Hey, at least so you, uh, as a man, we're okay. We can still fire them out. <laughs> it doesn't matter how okay, old we yeah, are. Yep, yep. We just gotta meet someone young enough to take it. You right, know? right, 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 right.